We're a small multinational, and I'm vice president and general manager of the Pennsylvania facility. As a whole, our corporation is about 1,700 people worldwide. The facility that I manage in, in Pennsylvania is about 450 people. As a manufacturer, obviously know what you're putting into your product, know what you're building, know what's going to go out there and, and be used by someone. There are over 30,000 people here at Greenbuild, which really needed, and what's happening here at Greenbuild are customers coming together along with manufacturers that care about it. We're all on the same philosophical plane, and the buyer and the seller are uniting, and as that happens, it absolutely reinforces the fact that the buyer, the customer, drives industry. There's also a responsibility for us to behave properly, and I call it, what are we doing when no one's looking? And it's important for the owner and the architect to be buying the product from a company that is behaving responsibly. And it's that responsible behavior that begins to speak even more loudly than our product. We had a particular instance where the manufacturer of one of the compounds we were using would not reveal to us the, the ingredients within that compound. They, for some reason, I think, believed that we would seek to find an alternate, less expensive source. However, they revealed every ingredient to the third-party certification organization or third-party certification group. And that was really important. We could not have gone forward had they chosen to continue to keep that secret. Third-party certification cuts through the greenwash or what we as manufacturers sometimes get caught up in, some of the, the hype about presenting our product. A third par independent third-party certification gives that buyer and certainly the specifier the full knowledge that what is being said is truth. In our instance, we've embraced McDonough Brungart Design Chemistry's Cradle to Cradle certification. Having the commitment to assess the known hazards as we look at bio-based materials, we're right in the very development of it, beginning to screen out certain elements within the bio-base, again, to make certain that we have a product that meets the chemistry. Additionally, we do a lot of wood finishes. We have a wood product and we do a lot of wood finishes. So assessing and understanding the chemistry of the finishes that we bring into the facility are important for us from the standpoint of, of worker safety and neighborhood safety. We manufacture an expansion joint cover. And for those who don't know what that is, that's simply a controlled crack in a building and so that the building can move around. And that product is cradle to cradle certified and it's predominantly aluminum. So aluminum is aluminum, but it also has a number of other constituents in it. And with the cradle to cradle certification, they'll tell you what they don't like about your product. And that also demands a continuous improvement. We use cadmium plated hardware bolts to go into the concrete so the concrete doesn't destroy the bolt. Well, McDonough and Brungart came back and said, cadmium, no, 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 got to get that out, got to get that out. So that's likely going to lead us towards stainless steel as opposed to a cadmium plated. We also make an entrance flooring product that is very popular within LEED and the, that is cradle to cradle certified also. And there we've looked at the carpet, the carpet strips. Uh, what is the base component of the carpet? That's nylon. And again, what colorant is used within that in order to create the colors? So again, taking that down through the chemistry screen on the, the carpet and the colorant within the carpet. Additionally, there's vinyl. And that vinyl used to be PVC. PVC is the least expensive of the plastics and the vinyls. Within our entrance floor, cradle to cradle entrance flooring products, we've gotten the PVC out. This year, we're adding more products within that line into the cradle cradle certification and taking PVC out of those products. So the environmental aspects and the chemical aspects then begin to come together. That applies so strongly to continuous improvement and being able to go forth and continue to reduce the amount of, of chemicals that are used in our products. Today, one set of standards may be available. We know that tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, the chemistry is going to continue to change and we are definitely going to be able to continue to reduce hazardous air pollutants, reduce the VOC levels, and reduce the harmful chemicals that may even be trace amounts but still be able to reduce even those trace amounts.